This is one of the FRQ questions from College Board, the ones that they give you quizzes to study. And I have these questions in the quizzes in uh, College Board for you to practice as well. Um, so the question st says, a student is performing some lab experiment with batteries, ohmic resistors, capacitors, and some identical ohmic light bulbs. The student first connects four light bulbs and an ideal battery as shown in the circuit one and observes the brightness of each bulb. The student then moves the bulb C to obtain circuit, circuit two. And so he, add, he moves um, C parallel to B, like looks in the circuit two. In a coherent paragraph length, response described how the brightness of light bulbs A and D in circuit 2 compare to their brightness in circuit 1. Support your claims with appropriate physics principles. One of the reasons when I saw this question, I was thinking um, I should record this for you and also try to do this question and answer like A and B and you don't see C yet, but um, if you pause when you see C and try to solve it on your own, try to do that before I start solving it. So one of the reasons why I decided to do this question is because you always ask me to do more circuits. And another one is because I saw the word ohmic. And an ohmic resistor is made ohmic because its function follows Ohm's law. Ohm's law, like uh, V is equal to I times R. So there is a linear relationship. So no matter what happens in the circuit, there is always V equals to I R or R R is equal to V over the current. So um, ohmic means it will follow Ohm's law. And most conductors are ohmic. Um, only a few elements may be not ohmic, like um, some bulbs or uh, diodes, um, vacuum tubes, so semi or some semiconductors may not be ohmic, but um, resistors and um, a lot of conductors are going to be ohmic. So for me to respond how um, the circuit is going to, or the brightness of A and D is going to change, I have to do some calculations to, um, to prove what's going to happen. So if I have these resistors in parallel, I can replace these three with one resistor, and that resistor is going to be R over 3. And then I still have this A resistor, which is R, and I have a battery. And my first resistor was um, resistor, and then these two connected in series, so I can just add them. So that gives me 2R, this one is R, and I have my battery. So the total resistance of this part, the total resistance of this part is 1 over 1 over the result flip over. And this is exactly what I did right here. 1 over R plus 1 over R plus 1 over R. Like for this resistor, I get 3 over R, but it's 1 over 1 over 1 over. The result flip over gives me R over 3. But for this guy, I have to work out. So I have 1 over 2R plus 1 over R. And the common denominator is 2R. And if I times the second denominator and numerator by 2, I get 3. So the total resistance of this green guy is um, 2R over 3. Also, the total resistance of this circuit, the total resistance of this circuit is 4R over 3. So I'm going to place one resistor. And then I have the battery. And I'm going to call this battery some EMF, which doesn't change. And then for the second one, I have um, a resistor, which is... 2R over 3, 
and then I have another resistor which is a resistor correct and like this and I can replace this resistor they're connected in series with one resistor there's gonna be only one resistor and it's the sum of them so it's gonna be 5r over 3 and then I still have my battery an EMF so you can see that resistance of this resistor is higher than the resistance of this resistor so the current here is going to be higher than the current here this guy is going to be smaller because i is going to be equal to emf over the total resistance and the total i'm going to write the sum of all the resistors so the symbol for the sum now if i go back right here from what i discovered i know this current right here is smaller than this current right here this current is bigger so the power on a let me do it in different color so if i'm looking at a bulb the power of a is equal to i squared r but it's the little i squared and then r and the power of b or not b but a in the second resistor in the second circuit the power of b is equal to this i squared times r so the brightness of a in the second circuit is brighter than the first one because the current will drop now coming back to back to this part so i have smaller current floating here smaller current and it's passing through this part and um there's bigger current e is going here so the bigger current and the smaller current and the bigger current in this part and this one is r over three this resistor is r over three and this resistor is two r over three and i have expression so from here i have expression for the second second circuit my i is equal to emf over 5r over 3 so i can move 3 to the top and emf of the second one the bigger one or um, the current of the second one is equal to um, emf and the total resistance is 4r over 3 so it's 4r over 3 so the voltage drop in the first resistor let me call it a point and b so the voltage between point a and b is equal to the total current which is three times the emf divided by 5r times 2r over 3 and if i do the same for this circuit i'm gonna call this point right here in nv so let's do this one is c and d c and d so the voltage between c and d is equal to the current which is 3 emf over 4r so 3 emf over 4r times r over 3 so this 3 and this 3 cancels and then this 3 and this 3 cancels so i have the voltage on ab is equal to 2r over 5 oh in the r and the r cancels so that gives me 2 over 5 emf and the voltage on cd 
is going to give you EMF over 4. Oh, R and R cancels. EMF doesn't cancel here. Um, so I have EMF over 4. So this gives you 0.4 EMF. This gives you 0.25 EMF. So the voltage on the first one is higher than the voltage on the second one. So the voltage right here between these two points is higher than the voltage over here. And the power, I'm going to write it sideways, and the power is equal to I squared R or V over R. So the power is the formula is equal to IV. Um, v is equal to I times R, so I have I squared R. Or you could replace I instead of replacing V with V over R. That gives you V squared over R using Ohm's law. So because the power, the voltage here, the voltage between these two points is bigger than the voltage between these two points, then V squared over R is going to be bigger here than over here. So it looks like this one is going to be brighter than that one. So I left um, only the, um, the solution for A. I only have the solution for A. So I only have the solution for A on the side, on the circuit. And um, for B part. So let's read our B part. The student thinks that one of the variable that uh, batteries has a non-neglectable internal resistance. The student measures the potential difference across the battery as 9 volt. So he measures right here between these two points, 9 volts. When it is not connected to any other current circuit elements, the student then connects the circuit shown above, well, on the side in our case, where the battery is represented by the circuit elements. So there's the two resistors, um, elements in a dashed box. So the battery is in a dashed box, and then uh, you have two 20 volt batteries. The voltmeter indicates that the potential difference across one resistor is 4 volt. Calculate internal resistance of the battery. Okay, so I'm going to scroll over. We don't need A at all because it's not related. The question is not related. And we're going to work out the B part. Let's choose the pretty color, purple. Um, so the the battery itself would show 9 volt. And um, in tr the the voltage along one resistor is showing 4 volt. That means there is a current. So let's do the current screen as we used to before. The current goes from positive to negative. So always from positive longer than to negative. And um, I'm going to call this little resistance little r. So this little resistance is going to be our little r. And um, so there is a current. To find out what that current is, I have to divide the voltage by the resistance. So if the voltage is 4 volt and resistance is 20, that means the current is 0 0.5, 0 0.2, right? 0 0.2. It's 4 divided by 20, which is 1 fifth, 0.2 amps. That means exactly the same voltage is going to be dropped right here because the series connection means um, the same voltage for both. 
So it's the same for volt we're gonna show here and for volt it's gonna show on the other voltmeter. Voltmeter is always connected parallel to the um, the element you're measuring voltage on. So you have nine volt, um, you have four volt here, you have four volts right here. That means um, on this resistor, the internal resistance, you're losing one volt. If you're losing one volt, and you know the current is 0.2, the internal resistance is equal to the voltage over the current. You're losing one volt inside of the battery, and the current in the circuit is 0.2. I don't have to write the volt. So it looks like the internal resistance is equal to 5 ohm. And finally, the C part. One of the light bulbs is now connected with an ideal battery, an open switch, an open switch, a resistor R, and an initially uncharged capacitor C. So they show a completely different circuit in the same problem. As shown um, on our right, the resistance of the bulb and the resistor are about the same so the bulb and the resistance have the same resistance the switch is then closed and left closed for a long time um, this part whenever they say for a long time that means the capacitor you have here is fully charged if capacitor is fully charged that means um, the charge on this plate the positive charge on this plate matches the charge on the capacitor right here and the charge on the negative plates is going to match the capacitance charge over there so if they're if, if they're matching their charges that means the current cannot co flow through this circuit so the current is going to stop flowing through the circuit so that's the same as disconnecting this whole branch so that's the same as cutting this part right here and you only have the bulb left at the resistance of R because they're almost the same. Describe how, if at all, the brightness of the bulb changes during the time the switch remains closed and explain why. Um, they also mentioned ideal battery right here. I want you to know that when they say ideal, ideal battery, that means uh, they assume that there is no internal resistance with the battery. So like in the problem uh, before in B, we had internal resistance. Here is no internal resistance. So um, you don't have to worry about that part. Also, uh, when you have this circuit connected like this and the switch is closed, the current is only going to go this way. So there is some current. And because the other resistor is disconnected because the charge is uh, the capacitor is fully charged, uh, your your resistor or um, will not have any current through it. That means the bulb is gonna be um, bright because it doesn't have anything but um, but itself. And even if um, even if the switch just just opened or um yeah just just opened then because these two um so this one the bulb and um the other branch are connected to the same two points or they are connected in parallel and parallel connections shares the same voltage so the voltage across this line and the voltage across this line is exactly the same. So that means um, the bulb brightness will not change whether it is um, connected, whether the switch is connected for a long time, whether this switch is connected for a long time or just got connected because um, the potential difference between these two points is going to be the same uh, when whether this one is charging or not because they are connected to the battery with wherever battery is.